apologies for the delay just now. We've been waiting for Huna Moana Dennis, who I understand is minutes away. Um, he will be here in time to take his speaking slot, I understand, so we'll make sure that that happens. Can I begin also by acknowledging those of you from the uh, organisations and those of you who have been in the front line of dealing. Much of that homelessness is concealed because many of the people affected are living in overcrowded housing. They look like they're going to a home at the end of each day or leaving home at the beginning of each day. But they are in totally unsatisfactory housing arrangements and they are still homeless. And then the second reason is that the attempt by our parties to get a select, a formal select committee inquiry out on the issue was voted down by national party members. But we persevered because we think this issue is absolutely defining of who we are as a country and as a people. And whether or not we are doing enough to look after our people to make sure that one of the absolute basics of a decent life, having your own roof over your head, is going to be true for all New Zealanders. That's our motivation. The MPs who have sat in on the inquiry and undertaken it have heard from more than 500 people and organisations, and there are some pretty chilling stories just about the circumstances that some people are in. And the committee has come up with a set of recommendations that are about making homelessness a priority issue, the housing first approach to fixing the problem, having more affordable housing, having more state houses, having more emergency housing. And the members of the committee will talk about that a little more later. Can I just thank the MPs from all the parties? Obviously, Phil Twyford has been leading Labour's effort on the housing issue. Uh, now for the last couple of years. The Green Party, uh, with whom we have plenty of common ground on this issue and the need to look after people. And I want to pay particular tribute to Madam Fox from the Māori Party uh, because it's rare but also pretty brave of an MP from a support party to government to come on, come on board an exercise like this knowing that what is going to come out of it is a set of not just criticisms but recommendations that go against the orthodoxy of the government of the day. So, Madam, I thank you for being part of this and bringing, uh, making this part of the United Party Party. <laughs> I want to conclude actually by introducing somebody who I think has shown that kind of typical understated Kiwi leadership on this issue, and that's Hura Moana Dennis, Chair of the Te Pui Marae. So when the issue of homelessness sort of burst into public consciousness in the way that it did earlier this year with the stories not only of families but actually of children being deprived, it was Huri Moana and the folks at Te Pui Marae and Māngere who opened their doors on a temporary basis because you know, that's never going to be a permanent solution to the issue, but acknowledging that there are too many people in his area who are suffering as a result of homelessness and who needed at least some respite during the bitter winter months uh, that he opened the Malai for. So, Hura Moana, can I say thank you for the leadership you have shown in the gesture that you made, and I invite you now to make some comments. Thank you. Good morning everyone and apologise for my lateness. Uh, we, we got some quality customer service at the airport and uh, that's another story. But um, can I first of all say uh, to Mutua Andrew, um, uh, it te kotiro e mitiria, it te whaia e marama, it te matua e fil, me kwe hoki e te tuahine koto uh, ma moto manaki whakatawa na ki a mātou te puia. Um, just to acknowledge uh, you all, the parties who have contributed to this document, uh, well done and congratulations and thank you so much 
for taking the time to come and speak to Grassroots. Uh, thank you for taking the time uh, to come and speak to those who have felt the brunt of this mamai. Thank you for taking the time to speak to those who are trying to fill the gap in a system that is very challenged. <coughs> um, can I say that um, over the last couple of months, um, we've, we've, we've transformed the lives of 181 vulnerable Māori, Pacific, ethnic and Pākehā whānau who have come to our marae. Uh, all of them obviously with nowhere to go. 154 of them were Māori, 18 were Pacific whānau, 10 ethnic whānau and 2 Pākehā whānau. They all came with a wide range of issues and um, uh, they actually blew us all away. Uh, we were quite used to rough sleepers and those doing it hard because they want to or have to. Uh, but these were mums and dads and kids. In fact, you would never know who they are between the hours of eight to four. We managed to put 130 of them into homes. Um, flats, lodgings or, or homes, either in social service provision or a private area. And um, I have to say, without taking anything away from the mum of this kaupapa, for us finding them homes was actually the easy part. And I'm not being disrespectful at all. Um, for us it was quite simple. The marae, our marae was just a better front door to the social service provision. Uh, for many, many good reasons, Fano just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. While they all came with their own issues, <clears throat> overcrowding, eviction, below the poverty line, bureaucracy and poor decision making seemed to be key things that just kept popping their heads up. It didn't matter how you spun the wheel or did the deal. Uh, they were always there, and they always had their own stories. <coughs> for us, we had a structure, we had a strategy, uh, we had a model that worked for us, and we got results. We're very proud of what we were able to achieve in three and a half months. But unfortunately, this thing called homelessness has too many names. Rotten teeth, family violence, shame, Death, mental illness, suicide, bail conditions, jail, home detention, bracelets, unemployment, no money, illiteracy, and the work actually the words actually go on and on and on. And I go back to the point that I made about finding people homes. It really was the easy part for us. But dealing with the many challenges that came with the family was quite overwhelming. <coughs> but we knew we had to do something because we simply carried such a big name in our marae, Te Kuya. For those of you who know her background, know what she did, what she didn't do, know who she defied, who she told to get lost, what she did with nothing for her iwi, for her people, I don't need to tell you anymore. Because we carried such a big name, we had to stand and deliver. Matua Andrew, Machiria, Etepapa, Kiudoro, Efai, Koto, there's a gap in our system. To the left, we have agencies doing what they do, mandated and funded. To the right, we have NGOs and others who were funded to do what they did. But there was a gap in the middle. Uh, I'm not too sure if anyone saw that there was a gap there, but that's where we were. Something needed to be done quite urgently. Something needed to be done quickly. For us, moving forward, I think it's important for you as the decision makers and the leaders of our country, uh, there needs to be a respectful an urgent look at the Māori situation. 154 Māori whānau just in three and a half months is unacceptable. While they will all have their stories, uh, 
of how they have ended up the way they had. It was still unacceptable. <clears throat> I'm not too sure what needs to be done in that space, but if there was ever a starting point, looking at the Māori situation needs to be a priority. So if I must have to put a memorial marae, we'd just like to say again congratulations for you, the parties who have contributed to this document, for taking the time to come and sit with us. I should tell you that the feedback that we got with your first three Pampano who had stayed around for a cup of tea was very positive and very supportive. Very positive in the sense that you all came, you sat down, you listened, and you had a cup of tea. Very simple stuff for us. So thank you very much for having us here, uh, having me here this morning, and I apologise again for being only a third of Te Puea Memorial Marae, um, but I can tell you that there are 25 other whānau back home and 1,200 volunteers and $238,000 given by the public and 122 tonnes worth of food, 10,000 cans of baked beans and spaghetti, uh, new clothing, uh, old clothing, prams. It was just overwhelming to think that in the morning I'd walk into the kitchen and there was the ethnic community cooking breakfast and food. In the afternoon, I'd go back into the kitchen and there were the mothers of Ponsonby and Mimuera cooking dinner. It was just overwhelming. Uh, they kept coming, they kept coming, they kept coming. Sadly, families are still trying to make our way into our marae, even after five, four and a half weeks of closing. Also, we're receiving donations still from members of the community. This thing called homelessness that has many, many names has touched the nerve of our country. Somebody, some group, somewhere, somehow took their eye off the ball. We have created a strata of community that everyone has forgotten about. So the leaders of today who are sitting in this room potentially need to go back and pick them up because they're all good people. So my it all to you really is our mantra that the Puya Herangi used, many of them of course. And who poured it all is Aha Pote Aha Mahi Te Mahi. It was very simple for her. No matter how big the task, how small the task, just get on and do what needed to be done. Which is all that we at the Puya Memorial Marae had done. Got on with helping those in need and it was a privilege and very humbling to be of service to these people because now we're all very good friends. Thank you very much. Tēnā tātou katoa. Kurimana, thank you for those words. Um, thank you for the work that you and the Marae did. You really uh, put the spotlight on this issue. And uh, you, uh, through your work and your actions, you expressed, I think, the compassion that people all over this country uh, were feeling about uh, people who were facing the winter homeless. And thank you for contributing the forward to the report. This issue has touched um, the hearts of the nation. And over the last couple of months, uh, the members of the inquiry uh, have heard more than 500 submissions from people who are living with homelessness or who have experienced homelessness. Uh, some of the leading social agencies who are working with uh, homeless people and countless New Zealanders uh, who believe that this simply shouldn't be happening in our country. We're convinced that the scale of uh, homelessness, 41,000 New Zealanders, according to the latest independent research from Otago University, represents a moral failure. The solutions are not complicated, but they require a government with the political will to make end ending homelessness 
a priority. Let me turn to our four principal recommendations in the report. The first is that we recommend uh, the nationwide rollout of the housing first approach for the estimated 4,200 New Zealanders who are without shelter. Housing First internationally is the gold standard for delivering services uh, for homeless people. It's already having some success in parts of the country, including in Hamilton. It involves providing secure, per uh, permanent housing uh, first and then putting in place the wraparound services that are needed. It won't come cheap. We were told that in Canada, they have estimated the cost is about $15,000 per person. That would mean in New Zealand today a seven-fold increase in the current government spending on the provision of emergency housing. But the key here is that the status quo has huge costs, both human and financial. Neville Pearce of Otago University's Hekainga Oranga program told us that the average homeless person without shelter uh, costs about $65,000 a year in services. Fixing this problem would mean a huge saving for the taxpayer of more than $200 million per year. Our second recommendation is that the government needs to massively increase the stock of state and community housing. The reason so many people are homeless is that there is an acute shortage of affordable rental housing. We recommend a build program that would increase the number of state and community homes by 1,000 a year at least until demand is met. Dr Kate Amore from Otago University has calculated that it would take between 15,000 and 25,000 additional state houses to put a roof over the heads of the 41,000 New Zealanders currently classified as homeless. Our third recommendation is that the government must fix a broken housing market. It's not enough to put in place a better safety net with supported emergency housing. This government has allowed the housing crisis to spiral out of control and that is what has pushed thousands of New Zealanders, the majority of whom are families with young children, and many of whom are in paid employment, into homelessness. It needs a systemic fix. And that must include cracking down on property speculators, building large numbers of new affordable homes, building more state houses, and reforming uh, restrictions uh, uh, restrictive planning rules. Our fourth recommendation is uh, for a New Zealand strategy to end homelessness. It's got to be all of government, whole of system approach that pulls together all of the groups. Central government, local government, community sector. It has to be backed with resources, measurable targets, transparent and accountable. We heard the most heartbreaking personal testimonies during this inquiry. The experience, uh, however, has left us convinced that this problem is fixable. It will require a serious and sustained commitment, not the piecemeal, ad hoc and inadequate series of initiatives that we've seen from the government in recent months. I want to thank all of the New Zealanders uh, who came forward and shared their personal stories, their expertise and their ideas with us. And I want to thank those of you in the room today who came along and presented uh, and shared your experience, uh, personal and professional, on this issue at the Wellington hearing. We can fix this homelessness crisis. The policy solutions are all there, they're in this report. All that's needed is the political will.
What has been overwhelmingly obvious uh, through this inquiry is that homelessness uh, disproportionately affects Māori, Pacifica, mainly. It is not uh, limited to that only, but disproportionately and overwhelmingly it is the place where it is felt most urgently. In the short term, the government can immediately change a number of systematic failures to prevent children from suffering as a fodder for homelessness. The government can immediately align its services. The correlation between winds and housing New Zealand is broken. It has become a barrier to getting a home, not a pathway to getting a home. Children need to have a security of tenancy so that they can grow up in the same neighbourhood, so that they can attend the same school, so that their education is not stagnated by transient behaviour because they are kicked out from one house to the next as family relationships are broken through the uh, charity of sleeping on someone's couch or in someone's garage or in someone's shed. If we are to overcome the burden of poverty, if we are to strengthen families and raise generations of young New Zealanders with a brightness of hope, then we must eliminate homelessness as a burden on those young people so that they can grow strong in this country in a safe, secure, warm, healthy home which would be the best place to raise a family, engage our children, grow and strengthen our young people. Families must not be forced to choose between feeding their children or paying their rent. Whānau Water must play a pivotal role in addressing the issues of homelessness, as we have heard uh, from Phil and from Hurimwana. Getting a house is easy, Dealing with the issues of staying in that house needs to be addressed through uh, coordinated navigation. What we heard from the submitters is that they have the solutions, that they can offer help to the broken system that we have. One of the best uh, results of doing this inquiry was simply listening simply offering an ear to those who feel it hardest. We must address this issue at Auckland, but it is not only limited to Auckland. There is a bow wave of homelessness that is hitting the regions, regions that have never had homelessness before and do not have the services set up to support homelessness. Hamilton, Tauranga, Napier, all of those places are already under pressure and it will continue if we do not do anything immediately to halt the broken system that is failing to protect our farm. It's not difficult. There are immediate short-term uh, solutions. There are long-term solutions while we build more houses. What it takes is a willingness of government and I am proud to be part of this group of the Labour Greens Māori Party movement to try and do something about it. I have been given an assurance by the Deputy Prime Minister that he will listen to the recommendations and so I challenge him to do so and I challenge the government to put these recommendations into place immediately so that we can eliminate homelessness, alleviate hardship and address the issues of poverty that are affecting our families. Te Puia was a beacon of light for our country and a focal point for the generosity of Kiwis, everyday New Zealanders who do not abide living in a country where we leave people behind. We do not want it, it is not our place, 
This is not how we grow Kiwis. And we all want to have a focal point for our generosity. But in fact, if we just spent our budget more wisely, then we could deal with the issue immediately and alleviate the pain, absolute pain being felt by our farmer. No reiri iwi, tēnei te mea se kia poutou, kia kuhua mahi, tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora koutou katoa e mihi aroha, kia koutou. Let me first acknowledge Labour leader Andrew Little and thank you very much for your opening remarks on this inquiry. To my parliamentary colleagues, Malibu Fox and Phil Twyford, uh, and Marla Davidson, I'd like to have you home uh, <laughs> safely. Uh, it's these three uh, members of parliament have been the leaders on this cross-party inquiry and have travelled the country uh, working directly with communities, those who are at the coalface either because they are homeless or working with homeless communities um, and hearing all of these stories day after day. And I think it has been at times heartbreaking but it is also the core work of members of parliament to go out and talk to people about what their lives are really like. That is what our job is. And that is why this cross-party inquiry was so necessary. If some MPs in this parliament don't want to talk to homeless people about this situation, we do now know that there are many who do and will take the time to do that. And on that uh, point, I would just give one to say an enormous thanks to Huri Moana Dennis and to Huri Marae for uh, assisting and um, not just the inquiry, engaging with community directly, but actually just all of the work that you and uh, all of the community there put into working with homeless people and, and the services around it. It is that kind of on the ground, uh, flax roots um, effort that makes a difference for families and that challenges the structures, the system to meet the needs of families and where families are and in the way that families need. And you've shown us a great model for how to do that. And we have enormous appreciation for your work. Um, there's no doubt we have a housing crisis, we have a homelessness crisis. Uh, we are seeing the results of uh, years of policy, of failure, of, a, of government, a government who has taken their eye off the ball and allowed this crisis to compound and compound and compound. So we now know that there are well over 40,000 New Zealanders who are homeless in this country. Using a definition that is internationally recognised, because when you are homeless, and I speak as someone who has had this situation myself, both as a child and an adult, it means you are not living in a place where you are secure. It means you do not have a home to call your own. It means you might be living in somebody else's house because you have nowhere else to go or living in a car or a caravan because you have nowhere else to go. So these arguments we hear about the definition of homelessness are arguments put out by people who have no idea what it means to have to raise your children from somebody else's lounge, trying to get them to school, trying to make sure they have a decent life, trying to make sure you have the income you need to keep the family going, to keep looking for a house to live in, to be rejected time and time again because landlords won't have you or it's just too costly. These are the, this is the daily grind of thousands of New Zealand families. This is what homelessness means every day to people right now, today. And we have this crisis and we can solve it. We have the solutions that have been put forward through this inquiry report. We have the community that's there backing us. We have the families who are telling us what it is that they need. It is now the job of those of us in Parliament and in government to take that seriously and to put those solutions in place. This is a country where we have dealt with homelessness and housing crises before, successfully, really successfully. We have been well renowned for our ability to house, to home New Zealand families. We've done it before and we can do it again. So the Green Party is very proud to have been part of this inquiry and to we fully support all of the recommendations in it. We've been dealing with, as Greens, we've been dealing with homelessness now for many years. It's been a core part of our housing uh, policy. And when in May this year we released our latest tranche of that, the Homes Not Cars policy, we suggested the using of $200 million of the dividend and tax that Housing New Zealand is paying um, to government 
for building emergency housing, um, state housing for New Zealanders. This report further refines some of those ideas and that policy, and so we fully support the proposals, particularly the Housing First proposal that has been put forward. And I just want to, in these just closing remarks, to remind us about the families that we are talking about, um, the kinds of experiences that people brought to this inquiry. Um, a family of working parents who had, one of whom had an accident, and although was able to go on ACC, was cut off by ACC just a few weeks after that accident. They had to live in a cold, damp and rotting caravan in a motor camp for three months while they looked for work, they looked for help, they looked for a home. For Mima Rhiannon, who, was, uh, who came and worked with the Greens when we released Homes Not Cars, she shared her story in May. Uh, she has a daughter with lung disease who goes in and out of hospital and needs a decent home. She found herself homeless after a relationship breakup and after losing her job, sleeping on couches at friends and family's houses, trying to make sure that her daughter was getting the health care she needed, while she herself was desperately trying to find a home for herself and her children. We heard in the inquiry of a mother with school-aged children who, leaving an abusive partner, had winds put her in a gang-run hotel motel and then cut off her benefit because she was in a gang-run motel. That family had to sleep on couches and rely on charity in order to have some security, some kind of roof over their head until they could get help. Now, this is how precarious New Zealand families are living right now. It just takes the loss of a job, a relationship to break up an abusive situation at home. It takes an accident where you lose your job and are on ACC and you can find yourself without a home to call your own and desperately seeking help for yourselves and your children. This is not about who you are. These things happen to us. This is what life is like to all of us. Some of us are lucky enough to have some backstops. Too many are not so lucky. So let's not play the blame game. Let's not think about trying to find excuses for not working with these families who need help. They need help, they need it now, and we can deliver it. It is now up to government to take this report and its recommendations, and more importantly than anything, the stories of the families who came and told what their lives were like seriously. They must take the lives of New Zealanders who are homeless today seriously and put in place the solutions that will house those families, provide them and their children with a warm, dry, safe and secure home. That is our commitment that we make as members of this cross-party inquiry. It is our challenge to government who have the resources to do that today, to make that commitment today. We certainly hope that they do so. Kia ora koutou katoa. Um, folks, that's the end of the formalities. Please stick around and have a cup of tea with us in the Grand Hall. Um, the politicians are going to do a, a stand up with the media over in this corner. Um, it will probably take five or ten minutes uh, and then we'll join you for a cuppa. Thank you.